Hey, what's going on? It's your boy Almighty Fish Mix back again with something a little different today. Today we'll be covering Jujutsu Kaisen chapter 145. Just a quick discussion video and I'll now be covering Jujutsu Kaisen alongside One Piece on this channel. So if you're into that, please like, subscribe, check it out, leave a comment. Let's get, just jump straight into chapter 145. So Tengen and Yuki. So Yuki, I thought it was interesting that she addressed him first and says to Tengen, aren't you going to say hello to me, Tengen? And he tells her, this isn't the first time we've met Yuki. So that makes me interested in finding out what their relationship is and their first encounter together. But I'm excited to learn that from her guarding him and uh, possibly seeing what her curse technique is as well and just seeing her backstory. So my next point, why did Tangan single out uh, Choso, Yuki, as well as Yuta for two of them to remain here and serve as his guards? Why those three? I thought that was very interesting while reading the chapter. And um, I also like that we got Brain Coon's real name, which is Kenjaku. He's not Getu, he's not Brain Coon, his name is Kenjaku. So that's what we can start calling him now. I thought that was great. We learned his like true objective. Like uh, Though, Tangan speaks of, ah man, this chapter was great. I loved how Tangan talked of Kenjaku's true objective, but he doesn't know why. Uh, Kenjaku's doing all this because he can't read the hearts of people, you know, and I just, I love that. I love this. I love this chapter. There's so much exposition. And uh, due to Tangan evolving over 11 years, it isn't impossible for him to murder someone that isn't a star plasma vessel. I like that. And I like that he's now, he states to them that he's now more of a cursed spirit than a human being. So all of this shit is just, it's insane. This is like insane. Nothing short of insane. And um, when Tangan states, this is probably one of my favorite parts of the chapter. I am not what you see before you at this moment. My evolved soul exists all around us. As I said, myself is now the world itself. The human who merges with me transforms into something greater than a sorcerer as a new being that is both there and not here. Uh, just wow. Okay. So, and also finding out that Kenjaku is the second most powerful barrier user was insane as well. But now, so going back to the page before this, the method of evolution that Kenjaku has chosen is the merging of humankind and me. So, so okay, I'm gonna break this down. So when he, he goes on to the next page and he says, there will be no boundaries between individuals. So evil would spread instantaneously the impurity of a hundred million people would flood the world. What just happened to Tokyo, what happened to the entire world if Tangan was to merge with someone now since he's not, you know, he's more with the earth and everything. He's not just a person anymore. So I thought that was just, uh, just in, this is all insane. And it's even crazier that Kenjaku isn't going to be the, the culling game like the master. So it makes me wonder if, Pre, it, the, it was a, it was a few no it was a few chapters before where Megumi pops up and we see Sumiki but we also see a guy and there's like blood splattered behind him and he just has like his hands out or something and it just makes me curious like maybe that was the game master I don't I don't know mm, I don't know I'm not quite sure but I also like the stuff of Tengen stating that he himself, the star plasma vessel, and the six eyes are all connected by fate. And in the past, Kenjaku has lost twice to the sorcerers of the six eyes. And the second time, he took no chances, killed the star plasma vessel and the six eyes less than one month after they were born. But nonetheless, on the day of merging, the six eyes and star plasma vessel appeared. After that, Kenjaku switched to ceiling instead of eradicating the six eyes and began searching for the prison room. Because two bears of the six eyes cannot appear at the same time. So the second time, he went and killed the kid the, as, as babies, the star plasma vessel and the six eyes. But the six eyes just went, it just jumped to someone else. That's insane. So that leads me to believe, I mean, this is way, this is just, you know, just headcanon way down the line. If Gojo was to die, possibly in a fight against full power Sukuna, that might not be the end, or it will be the end of Gojo, but it might not be the end. No, well, Gojo's not a kid. I don't know. He's not, he's not a baby, so. 
wow, I just that just threw it out the window completely. Never mind thinking about it. I'm like, that wouldn't even make sense because he's not a baby. I don't know. But possibly maybe the six eyes. Just seeing this gives us the possibility that knowing if a six eyes user dies, there's a possibility that their eyes can literally go to the next person. You don't have to wait like some time period or whatever. The six eyes can literally go to the next person. So I thought that was interesting. And then um, seeing Megumi this chapter was so hilarious to me. As soon as they started talking about Toji Zenin, Megumi's face just... Uh, and then moving on past that, uh, he just he doesn't want to talk about his dad anymore. He's like, so why is the culling game happening? And then learning that from Tangent, it is like breaking in the body prior to merging. So I'm just like every time like I read stuff that I was going through this chapter, I was just oh okay oh okay. And so the, I think one of the craziest parts of this chapter was. The game will continue until all the players are dead or all the players refuse participation and die. The clause mentioning long-lasting additions to the rules ins ensures that nothing can interrupt the ritual. And then in the next panel, you see Yuta kind of like, and then Megumi just, Grr! and then Mag <laughs> and then Yuji just confused. But then you get to the sixth rule. Excluding the point value of a player's own life, players may expend 100 points to negotiate with the game master to add one new rule to the culling game. We have no choice but to participate in the culling game and add a rule whereby Sumiki and other unwilling participants can get out. Yeah, I had a feeling that was going to be the rule that they wanted to add in. But how do they live through this? How do they survive if if Yuta, Megumi, and Yuji go in? I don't want to see just one of them come out. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. Which I doubt would happen, but that is something I don't want to see. So they decide who stays. I like that uh, Yuki and Choso stayed because, I mean... I feel like we've gotten enough Choso right now. You know, I, Yuta's back. Let's get more Yuta. Him with the, you know, with the original boys, the cast, and you know, the the, the school. Let's let's just see the, you know, the Jujutsu High Schoolers just doing their thing together. But I do enjoy Choso. He's one of my favorites as well right now. Him, he's up there with Toto. And um, the back of the prison realm. I thought that was crazy and. Seeing kind of like some discourse on Twitter, people like downplaying Gojo or calling him an idiot. Even in this chapter, they're all kind of mad. But it's like, why wouldn't Gojo get rid of the two things that can like nullify his technique? Two of the things that can fuck with him. Like, why wouldn't Gojo get rid of that? So it makes perfectly like good sense to me why he would do that. And I thought it was fucking insane seeing um, the, among the players in the culling game, Hana Kurusu, Kur, Kurusu. And her curse technique, her there, let me just say there, curse technique can extinguish any curse technique. So that's insane. I don't I don't see them getting this Hana Kurusu on their side, especially being a sorcerer from a thousand years ago, from the Hiyan era, stuff like that, all the evil sorcery going on. And it was a top of sorcery. But that's not to say that this person is even evil. Who knows? Who knows? But this chapter was amazing. I honestly, I skipped over a lot of stuff, but uh, I just wanted to get to like the big juicy stuff that I, the pause, 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 pause. I just wanted to get to the, 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 the you know, the, the pertinent stuff, the stuff that just really stood out to me. But um, I'm so happy seeing YouTube back and him, him not wanting to be like, he doesn't want to lead the others. That was probably one of the, one of my favorites of this chapter. And uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything. And finding out that YouTube was oh, across seas with Miguel to find the black rope. And a lot of people were questioning like, okay, so did Gojo know he was gonna get sealed beforehand? Is that why he had Yuta look? No, he was had Yuta across seas looking for the black rope because he wanted to make sure all of it was gone so it couldn't fuck with Gojo anymore, you know what I mean? But ah, that kind of sucks. So it makes me wonder if, if the inverted spear and black rope are completely off the table because if we're literally having to depend on the angel that's a big that's a big gamble, you know, having to depend on this one person and their curse technique and if they don't want to come in, if they're an enemy, then that's not happening. I just don't see it happening unless we just beat the brakes off of Hana. We beat the brakes off of Hana and force that motherfucker to open the box, but I don't know. This chapter was heavy in exposition. Um, in my future videos of covering Jujutsu Kaisen, I just want to state that I'm not like some big brain theorist, though I do try to follow along as closely as I can and like, you know, and try to, like, use, like, some common sense and, like, deductive reasoning and, like, logic with this when I'm reading. But 
I'm in no way some kind of big brain theorist, but I will be reading along and I'm just going to enjoy the story. And I hope you guys are enjoying me covering this as well when I start. Um, yeah, but I don't really have any ideas for what videos to make for Jutsu Kaisen so far other than live reactions and like discussion videos. If you're seeing this and you have any like suggestions, please leave like a comment. Um, but yeah, that, that's all I really had to say just real quick for Jutsu Kaisen. I just wanted to get my first video out for it. Um, thank you if you're watching. Um, leave a like, uh, a dislike if you didn't like, comment. Um, please subscribe if you haven't already. And uh, yeah, you have a good one. Almighty Fish Mix is now out.